Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Linkwe, a weekly conversation about tech that is decidedly low tech. You can find us on YouTube, on Twitch at Twitch TV link at slash Linkwe Podcast, as well as on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Linkwe Podcast. My name is Akeem, and I'm joined by Marcus Anato. and and Kathy and Lewis. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. And we're excited to have Miss Cathy Ann Lewis with us. Uh, Miss Cathy Ann Lewis is a higher education professional with over 20 years experience. She currently works with the University of the West Indies as a manager of the careers co-curricular and community engagement department and has the responsibilities for supporting students in their career exploration, planning, and development. Thank you so much for joining the show, Miss Lewis. My pleasure. It's my pleasure. And today we're talking about landing your first job in tech. <laughs> um, you know, you spend a lot of time, a lot of sleepless nights working on your projects, uh, yeah. but the light is at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what is next? Finding those opportunities is what is next. Now, from your experience, what are, what, where are some good places for students to look as they try to figure out what, what is next? Um, in terms of job search, you mean? Or in terms well, maybe actually, more broadly speaking, first, I mean, let me take a little step back. What are the typical job opportunities for uh, uh, students that are coming out of the tech faculty? Like, where do you typically see them going? Is well, our, yeah, our students, and it's for the other students to understand as well, our students literally go anywhere. When we have mm -hmm. requests for our IT students, our computer science students, electrical and computer engineering. We have a broad range of requests from um, banks to accounting firms, small tech startups, mm -hmm. um, the larger, you know, um, be mobile and digital, you know, it's a large range of services. And so it's for our students to understand that whether you're graduating with a degree in communication, social work, management, mm -hmm. you do need these technical skills. And it's not, we are not just talking about knowledge, we are talking about competence. Mm -hmm. And the competence that is needed will be dependent of, dependent of course on the industry. So hard right. tech industries, you know, they want to see that uh, programming languages and so on. But if you're going right. to management, they, at minimum, they want that Microsoft Office suite. Not knowledge, but competence. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. right, right, right. So, and that, that's really great to hear that you guys have that good um, private partnership because I think talking to a lot of students, the impression is, hey, I'd try and get the government work. <laughs> You know, you know, that sort of <laughs> mentality still is very prevalent, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and they really there's... focus on getting an OGT, you know. Mm -hmm. But there, there are opportunities in the private sector available to these students. Right. There and... Hmm? I said, yes, there are and, opportunities. And one of the ways that you are involved in presenting those opportunities is through um, the World of Work Initiative, the mock interviews, et cetera, that you guys put on. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, yeah. So before I really get into that, let me just say, um, when we are looking at producing the distinctive UV graduates, um, we are looking at graduates that will give back to the locally, regionally, and globally as well. So, um, partnership with public entities, partnership with private entities, but also government organization. These, these partnerships are key because we do have a number of our IT students and a number of our computer science students that do begin with the OJT. 
that first year and two year training and they are absorbed into the government services and they make very valuable contributions as well. Mm -hmm. um, as you would know, Akim, as well, when you hire the students, you know, um, they do mm -hmm. make those contributions. Of course. In, in terms of preparing students for the world of work um, at the Division of Student Services here at the university through our department, we do take a developmental approach. So most people, including students, <laughs> would know of the world of work. Why? Because that's the time when the hard job search begins. But we start our career exploration and development from year one. We have some contact with high schools, but of course, human resource or human resource doesn't allow us to touch every mm -hmm. high school. But we start that career exploration and development very early. And so from very early, we begin that discussion about planning your career. And part of planning that career is just exploring, you know, what jobs are out there. We of course, we of course start with a career assessment and we use that to help guide them. What jobs are out there locally? What jobs are there regionally, globally? In the field, in this case, in the tech field. And then we want them to learn about these jobs, not just by name, but function. Mm -hmm. So for example, you want to become a programmer, know that you'll have a lot of hours in front of a computer. Are you willing <laughs> to sit down mm -hmm. a couple of hours or are you going to get bored? Mm -hmm. You're going right. to get bored right. exactly. Maybe a straight programmer route may not be the route for you. Mm -hmm. So right. we do that right. as well. Part of that, Akim, is also mentorship. We encourage them to go out there, do informational interviews. People love to talk about their jobs. Agreed? Yeah. 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 We made a whole podcast about it too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, go speak to the people in the field, you know, um, do some job shadowing and so on. And mm -hmm. then as they go on to their second year, final year, as the case may be, um, we do more hard skills such as, you know, we want you to perfect that resume. We want you to learn about interview skills. We want you to learn about personal branding, very important, on the resume and at the interview. Um, and we expose them to a number of interactions with industry professionals as they go through that three-year cycle. And then, of course, in the final year, it's the world of work. Mm -hmm. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. So, so the, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So the world of work, we have a number of sessions, as you would know. Um, it starts with uh, resume writing sessions and curating that resume. We also critique them. We have boot camps. We really work with them in terms of the resume writing, preparing right. for the interview, developing their brand. Um, right. handling interview anxiety, dressing for the interview. We do the entire gamut of the skills that we think the students would need. And we also continue to expose them to industry experts and industry professionals so that they could get the word from the people that will be recruiting them and that will be hiring them. Mm -hmm. And then of course, as you know, it's the mock interview. We are in the middle of mock interview season, as you know. Um, thank you all again for, for your continued partnership with us in terms of the mock interviews, as well as recruiting our students. And we do the mock interviews. We have a networking, we call it a VIP cocktail reception for our students that stand out during the course of the year. And then, of course, the recruitment fair. And that's where we have um, en masse our partners, our stakeholders come in and hire, but even after the recruitment fair, even now, for example, Akeem, we do have requests that are coming in and that we are filling these requests. So we keep those resumes on file and we continue to do that throughout um, the year. And right. once they graduate, we promise them one year of active um, resume sharing with our, our recruiters 
<laughs> right, right, right. And and I think a lot of students, you know, take these things sort of for granted. Um, it, <laughs> because especially like a lot of the activities that you mentioned, they are all important. And, you know, we understand the students are busy, they're busy with their final year project. But just to kind of give a perspective of how that helps, one thing I would intimate is when it comes to the resume workshops, that, that really does help. And some of the tips, even though they see, you know, a lot of students, for example, and, and, and I, I was the same way, do I really need to go and buy resume people? Right. But I would admit there was one of our first hires uh, when we got his resume for a week, because uh, I'm terrible with names. Um, I said, oh, the one with the shiny people, like for a week. And that helped, you know, he, he stuck with in my mind because of the shiny resume people. <laughs> so anything you could do to differentiate, because one of the things um, I, I you know, would admit is you do get a lot of applications Exactly. And you're really looking for anything to, you know, um, help you sift through everything. <laughs> you yeah. know, so whatever you could, you could do to make yourself stand out, that really helps. The and there's so much that I would like to talk about, even just on the resume part, because tech is an interesting <laughs> one. Um, mm -hmm. And we we see, like I said, we see a lot of resumes. Um, and one of the interesting things I think about tech is that from an employer perspective, I do like to see the computer skills exactly. earlier on in the resume. Mm. Is that something that you guys are steering students towards? Um, it depends. Now, we know that every individual is unique mm -hmm. and every student is also unique. So we take a holistic approach to curating those resumes. Mm -hmm. And of course, we give advice. And one of the things that we tell our students, it's exactly what you're saying. You want to stand out. Mm -hmm. With those hundreds of resumes, you want to be remembered. And for the tech field, as well as other fields, these skills are important. So for some students, for example, you know, we no longer have a traditional 19-year-old or 20-year-old entering the university. Mm -hmm. So for a student, it may be that their work, their experience in the tech field is important. Right. And so that may come earlier in the resume because right. you would want to see, hey, okay, this means... I will have to do less training with this particular student, right? right? And for another student, they may have that professional skill and competency segment at the top. Right. But wherever, wherever it falls on the resume, it's something, as you said, we, we tell our students, ensure that it's there, that's the first thing, ensure that it's very visible. It should not be um, consumed with, with a lot of words and you have to go to read to find it. Ensure that it's visible. Mm -hmm. Ensure that the recruiter is going to see it with a quick, a very quick two-second glance mm -hmm. and ensure that it's well placed on the paper. So we always tell them to ensure that those skills are very visible. Right, right, right. So even you mentioned, um, you mentioned, you know, a lack of uh, human resources or else you guys would be uh, uh, working more closely uh, with secondary school. What came yeah. to mind is like, you know, we have our young Kobe Bryant here with us. And I was like, yeah, boy, if, if I was saying I had a recruit Marcus. <laughs> the Trinity for sure. Marcus, what are some sort of tips you would say at this stage, you know, give for um, developers coming up? So uh, first of all, I just want to piggyback a lot on what Kathy and said. I really like the fact that this job finding process is an ongoing activity, right. that there are events and preparation. And to be fair, you see the preparation. We know who are prepared for these things <laughs> and who kind of does true. something last minute, right? I just so that's that's for our students to hear. <laughs> right. you know, no, it's, like, it's really obvious. So like the polish of like your application, 
And even on the technical side, how you present yourself, it's right. really obvious who is kind of ready, ready, versus who kind of like, okay, cool, it's, I finished step one, so now step two, right? <laughs> right, so, right. Uh, um, and the one thing to do, I'll say, is even when you prepare these things, is kind of think about your career path. Not just the job itself, but where you're going to go. Exactly. And that actually also influence um, where you end up. So I'm just going to share my screen really quickly. Uh, this is something programmers may be familiar with. It's a GitHub page. The, the real key thing in technical jobs is to prove that you have the competence. The competence. You exactly. need to prove it. So, I mean, very recently, I had a conversation with a young person, and he kind of just mentioned, it's like, oh, hey, um, no, I'm in, I'm a programmer, I'm interested in these things, and I do game development. I'm like, oh, me too. I love making games, right? Here's my portfolio. Where's yours? No portfolio. Exactly. Red flag. <laughs> if you're going right. to say anything, you have to prove it. So GitHub is a great way. I'm just going to show you. This is, I don't want to be like, it just happened to be my homepage. I don't want to be egotistical. So I'm going to show you some other actual GitHub profiles and kind of like what you see. When I go to exactly. a link and your link should be on your CV, these portfolio items should be linked on your CV fairly early on. Um, I'm going to see here, I was like, okay, this person is actively coding. So he's not just someone right. who had a degree and kind of stopped. No, he's, a coding is probably like a hobby, a passion, a lifestyle. Right. I can look here, I can see Python, I, can be, I see blockchain kind of twice. So I'm like, okay, he is in that FinTech space. I'm just gonna go to here as well. Um, it's like, okay, cool. This person here, also a friend of mine, but you see TypeScript, TypeScript, JavaScript, JavaScript. So I kind of, at a glance, just from the portfolio, get like what this person's interest is in. I can see whether like in the organization, the team, there's natural skills that matches that gap we have. Those are really cool things. And this advice I give to everyone, but I'm not sure they follow it. And it has actually helped me a lot. And again, not to gloat, I don't like just sharing Marcus Marcus everywhere. But it has made a big difference. I think Akim hired me, so she knows as well. <laughs> having a blog, it's super, really great way. And not as a blog, you can have a YouTube channel. I know I'm an old person, I like to write and read. Um, young people like to make videos. How about a technical uh, playlist or some technical YouTube videos, do what you need to do. That's but right. like, show the way you think about tech, show your passions and the kind of elongated talks about tech. And that is always better. Sometimes it can be something as simple as this short article to be like, I solved the problem, um, it's kind of cool. I defined what the problem was. Exactly. I had a solution, I'm sharing my solution. That's literally what the job does anyway. So that's a good sign that you can communicate these things. Communi soft skills and hard skills are really important. They're the same. So one thing is to be great at programming, but you need to communicate that greatness. That's right. They're the same thing. And uh, sometimes it's a bit longer and it's great because longer blogs means I have deeper thoughts about something. And if a uh, uh, candidate comes to me and has like really kind of lengthy things where they, doesn't have to be right. It just has to be a thought exercise and it's interesting right. opinions. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that, right? So the portfolio, it's super thing. It's just me. We want to believe you. We want to like hire people, but you need to prove that you have the confidence. And um, having a portfolio with GitHub or even a personal portfolio, that your own brand stands out much more. So that's why like a blog for me or a YouTube channel for yourself could really make a big difference. These things really do help when a techni for technical interviews and just for, yourself as well it's not just for the interview it's just for <laughs> your place in the community your your knowledge your, your growth and everything that's the two things at a glance yeah, yeah in terms of like uh i kind of we touched on it just a little bit but in terms of where to look in mm -hmm. that sort of yeah. in that phase as well so you organize your your, your blog your resume on on right. par the next step is looking for those opportunities yeah. world of work is is one good opportunity one that i would also add not just one but one bit of advice i would add is looking in different tech communities That's right. so there are facebook groups are actually really popular and one in particular we're a part of the caribbean developers group is a really good space if you're looking for work because there are a lot of people looking for very sharp uh, technical folks. It may not seem like it, but they are there. 
uh, as well as there are groups on LinkedIn and different platforms that you could be a part of. Because, you know, I I remember when I was looking for work, I, I always had a frame of mind, like my job at that point was to get a job. And that's all, and I had whole day to do it. So, <laughs> you know, so I would right. do a lot. Of, you have the time to do mm-hmm. a lot of these things, work on your portfolio, mm-hmm. be part exactly. of communities and that kind of thing. And I even went as far, I remember I would tailor my resume to the job application. So I would move exactly. things around if I, if I felt like I wanted them to see exactly. certain things. Right. The next thing that, and as I hearken back to that time in my life, one of the things was I would be very discerning about the things that I apply to. Is that a good approach or should, you know, students apply to everything that they see? What, what is sort of the advice on that front? Um, it really depends, Marcus, on the individual one. It also depends on where they are in their career development. So for an entry level student, and I still wouldn't say apply to everything, you know, do your due diligence, but spread your wings. Yeah. And it it really depends because if someone is making a career change, their, their, um, applications would go out to a more select group of employers and recruiters because they're already working. Um, They have more Mm -hmm. to bring to the establishment. They have more to offer. Maybe as Marcus was saying, some ideas that are there, you know, see my blog. These are some ideas that I really think can work for your organization Uh, there's this app i've been working on you know that kind of way so it's going to be different and they are going to be more select for the younger audience we would advise them to spread their wings um the majority of our tech students i must say um once they do their due diligence um and i can speak for those that actually register with us the majority of them get hired um and the faculty also has some partnerships as well so what i can say is you your selectiveness will be based on you as an individual it will also be based for example the landscape right the opportunities that will be available in 2021 is a stark Mm -hmm. difference from the opportunities that have been available, let's say 2015 or even 2018. Mm -hmm. So this Mm -hmm. all feeds into our job search strategy and it is a strategy. You must Mm -hmm. have a job search strategy. And more and more now, and COVID has just tossed us into that, those opportunities will be located online. So we seeing in the past LinkedIn, we know it's a professional um, platform and there would be some networking and some hiring, but the number of vacancies that we are currently seeing on LinkedIn, I mean, it's phenomenal. And so we always encourage our students to have a LinkedIn profile. And as Marcus Mm -hmm. said, have an online um, portfolio, well, hard copy portfolio, now it's better be online. Mm-hmm. But um, we are pushing our students even more now to have that professional profile. Have it on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And as Marcus mm-hmm. said, use your YouTube channels, mm-hmm. you know, not just to post um, SpongeBob and, you know. Um, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> right. And these things are important because mm-hmm. it shows you as a person. But we mm-hmm. want to see that professional profile. And we want to help you to create that professional profile. Mm-hmm. We want to help to tell you what that should look like. And so mm-hmm. we are inviting, and of course I told you with the world of work, we are very flexible to the needs of our students and also to the needs of our recruiters. So we are going to have more sessions now on 
your online branding, building your online presence so and nice. using your LinkedIn profile and how you contact people online. And it's not as though we have not done it before, but we are going to be making an extra push now because that's mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's at. You mm -hmm. know, I yeah. don't know if you are um, familiar. There's a, a new app out. It's my my favorite friend. As I told you, I'm not techie, but I like tech stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, Clubhouse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> right. So Clubhouse is my 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 new friend because you know I go into these um, tech rooms. I go into these LinkedIn rooms and there are these professionals and I was in a room last week or a couple of weeks ago and there is Google, Amazon, Nike representatives hiring students, you know, mm -hmm. and talking about, you know, what they look for. They're talking about right. what they look mm -hmm. for and they are telling you, you know, what to do with your LinkedIn profile, as Marcus said, you better have that link to your blog or mm -hmm. all, your, all your coding history and so on. You right, need to have right. it there. Mm -hmm. you know? right, right. And mm -hmm. so it's for us to encourage our students and, of course, work with you, our stakeholders, to have that competitive online presence. Because um, one of the things they said is that... Um, for international students, they, they are intimidated. And this was the guy from Google, the recruiter. And he said, um, you know, if we see your LinkedIn profile and mm -hmm. we go through all your professional documentation that you provide, and we think you're a good hire coming out of university, we will ask you, you know, we will ask you to do that. And so in that room, people will get in like, okay, send me your resume, um, DM me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for the tech students and for all our students, this online presence in terms of your job search strategy is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. I tell students, um, do not completely uh, negate the importance of the daily newspapers, you know, mm -hmm. or when mm -hmm. the main newspapers are going to post job opportunities. There are some companies, as part of their requirement, they must post these jobs. Right, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So part of your job search strategy, I tell students, a good way to do it, alternate. Buy one one day, buy another one the next mm -hmm. day that's part of your job strategy and you know mm -hmm. what they are also online now mm -hmm. you right, want to right. as part of your job search strategy you want to use your network you want to mm -hmm. understand as well how to network and now during covid mm -hmm. you want to understand how to network virtually and it's not just about just sending an email mm -hmm. networking right takes it to another level. So um, mm -hmm. job search strategy, as you said, Marcus and Akeem, extremely important. And our students, as we always tell them, you must be proactive about it. You must right. be proactive right. about yeah. it. So you do your due diligence. Yeah, you, you join the, the clubhouse chat. Yeah, get your <laughs> resume out there, right? And uh, no, that was an awesome tip. That was an awesome mm -hmm. tip. Um, mm -hmm the you get the interview what are some do's and don'ts in those interviews now we had a standard you know fair do's and don'ts don't show up late <laughs> that's a big <laughs> you, know what, you know what you know what's a don't that isn't often spoke about right don't show up early either don't show up too early either too early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you show up too early, like let me say half an hour early, I've had that happen a couple of times. Actually, again, yeah, I give you the perspective of the the employer or the team leader, or whatever hiring is like you have a a sandwich at time, you you know, you put aside for interviews. So when the person shows up too early, you're in the middle of work, 
So you know, you get caught <laughs> on the back foot. And there is this illusion, and 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 and, and I know I kind of doing the 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 wizard uh, Oz thing and pulling the curtain back. You know, before the interviews, particularly when I was a team lead in the U.S., did we study the resumes well before? Admittedly, we didn't. We would print it. We would go through it maybe ten minutes before and then go in. Mm-hmm. So when you come half an hour early, I really I flustered. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's that's one rare, you know, right. do nuance. That come up yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are some more nuanced, you know, do's and do's? <laughs> the thing to uh, Marcus and Akim is that for smaller companies that mm. it, it throws you off because when the student comes in you're probably in the middle of you know that morning coffee chat hey markers this is what our day looks like <laughs> you know you handle this i handled it you know you're doing your your, your strategy for the day but most times and this is where students have to understand the industry and properly research the company because in larger firms if you're half an hour early, if you're an hour early, if you come three o'clock, you know, there's a waiting area. So you're right. not okay. mm-hmm. let into that interview room or into right, that right, right. interview mm-hmm. space or whatever, mm-hmm. um, you know, half an hour before the interview. There'll be a waiting area. Mm-hmm. And I'm right. glad you right. brought that up so our students and the general population understands that for a smaller firm, you don't want to do that. You may not want to do that. And that's why it's important for our students to research. Right. Okay. Right. So in terms of some do's and don'ts, and as you said, there are a lot you want to be there prior to the time of your interview. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one of the things um, is less common for our students, you know, um, talk to someone who works, if you know someone who works in the company, mm-hmm or through mm-hmm. networking, mm-hmm. so you right. can get an idea of the company and the culture and some questions you may want to ask, mm-hmm. right, at the interview. And that's another do. Always have questions to ask. Thank now, you. I was part of an interview <laughs> um, one day, and when the, the, the candidate left, we, we smiled, we said, we, we swore, we were the ones being interviewed, you know? Right, right, right. right. So then, <laughs> you want to ask like a million questions, but at least have mm-hmm. one of the questions. And um, this is based on your research. What's the company's mm-hmm. mission? What's their vision? What's right. the latest um, community service um, experience they had? What's their corporate mm-hmm. social mm-hmm. responsibility? Mm-hmm. Like, you want to do that research mm-hmm. because you want to be able to speak to it during the interview and you want to know how does that relate to who you are as an individual because right. they want to know mm-hmm. that it's a good fit they want exactly. to know that exactly. but you also want to know that right. exactly. it's a good fit for you i agree exactly. Exactly. um you want to perhaps if you are you should have been at this point a part of at minimum the student arm of these professional organizations mm-hmm. so you want to go in with a fair knowledge of the professional organizations and perhaps what's happening and i tell students that because you never know who's on the panel mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. of course very basic but i repeat it all the time always be honest mm-hmm. be honest of course, it's a time of anxiety. It's an interview. It's this big job. But be relaxed and be yourself. When you are yourself, mm-hmm. you can flow. You can give the information. They right. ask a question. You won't freeze up. Right. So just right. relax and be yourself. Um, people have different views on this. But I tell our students, unless you know you're very competitive, you have the experience. If you're a more mature student, you have the experience and you're making a job transition, feel free to ask about that salary, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for our students, um, 
most companies will have a round of interviews, like the initial interview, and mm -hmm. they will call you back. If you can avoid it, don't ask about that hard salary question um, <laughs> at the first interview. At the first, right. right. Yeah, do your research. Do your research. Right and have a salary range in mind because they may ask you um what type of salary are you looking at right, right. so be sure to do your research if it's entry level if it's mid-level be sure to do your research in the industry and this is why also joining professional organizations are very important right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know going into the interview what that salary range is so in case you're asked that question mm -hmm. right 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 well, Marcus, course, what are some oh sorry no i was gonna say of course there are a lot more but you know mm -hmm. yeah 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 for certainly uh, in the interest of time uh, we appreciate the, the, those are really good tips yeah. marcus well, what are what are your you know gems for the interview Oh, so and so, I, I and I guess I, I heads up for those who you will be interviewing <laughs> during the course right. of this week. <laughs> right. Uh, I would say for sure um, a, a lot of what again, Katya, and you said some really great wisdom and knowledge. And I'll give you one tip about how to do research in a company. Go on the company's LinkedIn profile and look at the people. Look at who's in the department you're applying for. Not just generally. I mean, do a general research, but look at you can try to get an idea of who's actually going to interview you. So let's say it's like a company, it might be the founder, look for other programmers and look at what they're doing. Does it have other programmers? And do you want to be working all the time as the one and only IT person? If that's not for you, put that red flag up and be like, hey, you know what, hey guys, thank you for this, but uh, I, I think I want some try time. Be <laughs> right. smart for what you want. You have to know what you want. Right. And you have to communicate these things. Questions are super important in an interview. I want to know that you did your research, but it's a great way as someone who, again, uh, very recently on the other side and now doing interviews, but very recently on the <laughs> other side with Paula, like it's good to know, like, does the values of the company matter what I want? Um, to give context, I quit a job previously in a different industry to kind of go to more software development and for different culture and career paths. So it, those things were super key to me. Like, does would I go to a place with a career path, with the culture I want? And you kind of have to know for yourself. They want to hire you. That, that's why they have an interview process in the first place. So make sure you want to work there. So keep those things right. in mind. And um, I, this is one killer thing. You always want to stand out interview. And stand out doesn't mean the best meme, and not just humor. I mean, really stand out. <laughs> And yes, be yourself and everything. You know what would really impress me? If you knew that, let's say we parlor does app development or you're working for a telecoms company and you could create a project or some kind of insight about the industry, can you show me an application? Can you show me like this kind of telecommunication thing which forms it interesting? So me like on your own. Not to why you should do one does. One, no one really does it. <laughs> no one does it. Two, right. if you can right. create something by your own. That's actually what the job is like. So if I'm an app, app right. company and you create a mobile app, I'm like, yeah, you can do the job you're applying for. You're not just a student, right. you're an app right. developer, right? right? So right. think about that way right. to stand out for yourself. Like, you know, think about your brand thing. I remember when I was in that period that I was unemployed and uh, looking for a job and I found Repala, you know what I did? I was like, okay, Repala, I see web development. I literally did a bunch of things on React. I'm putting it on my GitHub. These things are calculated too. But I'm like, hey, I want <laughs> these guys to know oh that I am a web developer. So oh here you God. are. You can see I do web development. So I literally, and I did like a whole YouTube course and everything to make sure I'm good at React. So like you kind of go to so that you are actually capable <laughs> at the job. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. And that's why we tell us. You know, you have to be proactive. That yeah. was, a yes. <laughs> and you know, as you yes, said, yes. now that a lot of things will be happening virtual as well, Marcus, it will be easy to show Akim mm -hmm. in the interview. You mm -hmm. know, right? Yeah. They, right. Click up exactly. on yeah, yeah, I, I had a link, link for, for sure. the app I created. I'm like, yeah, like, <laughs> show this, right? The guy yeah, literally yeah, asked yeah, yeah. me, "I'm interested in project you work on." I was like, "Actually, I just bust my brain on this project for you." Great, <laughs> I can describe the challenges. Yeah. Because I was able <laughs> yeah. to do that beforehand, yeah. I knew for myself with the confidence that I can do this job. 
Yeah. Like, you know, right, right. <laughs> that was good for exactly. me as well. Exactly. And that's how yeah. so we see this is the difference between the knowledge and the competence. You have shown there that you're competent. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, I will attest those two things do with that. By that whole seal. You know? <laughs> and I think, you know, you mentioned something very important. I think I want to be sure everybody understands uh, what Marcus said. It's true that companies, they want to hire. That is why they're going through this process. And it is incredibly time consuming. So they really want to to get you in the door as soon as possible, but you have to do the right things to make that decision easy. And I think um, a lot of the things that was mentioned is important. And for the interview specifically, that's your opportunity. It all comes to a head in that interview. That's right. Being able to tell your story, being able to communicate, hey, I am a fit for your organization, that like the resume and all those things, those think of those as just the discussion points that's because that's mm -hmm. what it is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it is important, as was mentioned previously, to be calm and be comfortable and be honest help, helps with that a lot so yeah. that mm -hmm. that conversation mm -hmm. goes really smoothly because we're looking at all those things. We're looking at you haltering. We're looking at the wheels turning in your head because we could tell our fib is coming. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and when we tell that, that's what we dig into. You know, it's like, all right, right. you know, you said, because a lot of students, they, they come in, they, they want to see what they think the uh, interviewer wants to hear. Wow. So they'll say, yeah. yes, I am a, I, a thing and I'm a leader and I've been in leadership mm -hmm. roles. And I like to ask about your final year project. I was a leader in this. I'm like, all right, how did it go? And then, and when I started interrogating, it started to fall apart. You know, it, it started to fall apart. in some cases, it's like, oh no, you didn't really code anything. You did other parts. You mm -hmm. weren't really the, the leader because you couldn't take me through the process. You know, right. and mm -hmm. that's where it'll fall apart. It's totally mm -hmm. fine to be like, yeah, I was in a supporting role, and you describe mm -hmm. your experience. Honesty mm -hmm. is the best policy, right? Mm -hmm. So don't make things up because the other thing I would say is you want to, we try hard as interviewers to get you in a calm space because exactly. we want honest answers, right? So when I look through the resume, I'm looking for things that we can have a quick discussion on. Um, mm -hmm. It might be that we went to the same school. So once all the KRC people out there, once I see KRC, it's like, ah, but that's not going to ask about Mr. Ward. But, uh, you know, I'm looking for things. <laughs> nah, just Trinity, we're lucky for him. Yeah, Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but also, it's like, if you put karate on there, uh, you know, I did a little karate. I could talk about yeah. that. If you put your was in stores, I'll talk about that. that green that. belt, so we'll talk right, about Taekwondo. You know? We'll talk about that. <laughs> If you put that on there and you didn't do those things, well, well, well. What I thought was going to be a calming discussion, all of a it's sudden all turns out pretty poorly. Yeah. I don't think so, about it. It's know. like, we're hiring you. We don't want to hire a liar. Like, right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 All right. So I, I think we... Mm -hmm. No, I was not going to say it's Sorry. important what you all are saying there for the students to understand that the interview is just part of their story. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, part. exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we covered some good, good points. So for all the students who are listening, if you've not already signed up, is it too late for them to sign up to everything? They could for still... The world, yeah. For the world of work, yes, for that part of it. But even mm -hmm. for students that do not participate in the world of work, we continue to offer support to them in terms of resume right. critiquing right. and so on. Mm -hmm. And also we now have a new platform on campus called the UE Connect, where mm -hmm. okay. students can go ahead. You can sign up for the UE Connect because jobs will also be posted there as well. Our mm -hmm. alumni as well can go ahead and sign up because we will have jobs posted there as well for students with experience. But once there's an individual who's a student at the university registered, and we also help, I said, we work a lot with high schools and individuals on the outside, but they won't be able to flood us. But um, once it's a student here, yeah, we support them through this process. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe right. I'm cool, cool. So, of work, but it's not too late for the world of work. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so take advantage of these resources. Definitely join the communities. I think a lot of good tips here. If you have the iPhone, get on Clubhouse. Do your research. Because, yeah, one thing um, I see in, uh, in the comments that are worth bringing up is, yeah, you know, do your research on the company. As you can tell, mm -hmm. like, this is my uniform here. I always end polos. You know, if you come up, you, if you have I'm a only in character for this type of yeah. conversation. I'm only wearing a shirt <laughs> right? because it's an interview right? podcast. Yeah, you had to make an effort. I know, so you know, yes. effort in it yes. because, you know, I, I earn my stripes. But certainly, <laughs> in, in, for sometimes, this is where the research comes in, because sometimes if you show up in a, a suit and tie, it's like, all right. <laughs> that's what, that's, in some cases, it indicates of, hey, you didn't do your research, because for exactly. a small shop for startups, it's like suit and tie is kind of tricky. You, you could split, split it somewhere in between and go, you know, dress shirt. Mm -hmm. Some so khakis, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. It all depends. If if you if you go into IBM, suit and tie, suit might and tie. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do your all research. Good, all good tips. Thank you so much for joining us, Miss Lewis. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to yep. comment, message. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to be on the markets is a good time to be in tech. Thanks so much, everyone. Yeah.